Hey, what's up, people's hard leg Joe here with the profile for my Datascape Toolbox deck. A strange mismatch of psychics and worms based around the number three that makes exclusively synchros and ixies. It's a pretty strange archetype, and also not out in America for another couple months, which means all the names listed here are likely to change. As such, I'll be making up my own names, even for the cards that are already out in the TCG. Starting off with our monster lineup, we've got three Nightcrawler, three Cyber Goats, one Bunny Bot, three Techno Monks, three Spooky Moths, don't tell me that's a butterfly, I know a goddamn moth when I see one, three Robo Ladies, two Digital Cat Girls, ooh woo, three Pixel Puppies, one Jean Grey, and three Abominable Snow Rabbits. For spells, we're on three Tech Town, three Landfills, the Twister Twins, an E.T., three Search Engines, and our only trap is three copies of something I like to call the data gun. As for our extra deck, we're on one each of Synchro Towers, Waking the Dragon, Mozilla Firefox, The Dragon Zord, Crystal Meth, Dancing in the Moonlight, Computer Chimera, The God of Thunder and Batteries, The Bouncer, A Salamangrate Disguised as a Datascape, The Literal Bouncer, Electro Dragon, A Broken Sword, and The Boozler. Uh, oh, and I see you to have accidentally gone beyond Utopia. My bad. As for the side deck, it's not like a real side deck, it's just other monsters this archetype can make. Uh, Datascapes are all level 3 and 6, and your trap card, when banished from the graveyard, can increase or decrease their levels by 3. They lock you out of making links or summoning anything lower than 3, but a third of the monsters are tuners, and another third can change themselves into tuners. This leaves you with the ability to make exclusively synchros and ixies, who are some multiple of the level 3. Generally, you can expect to summon about 4 monsters on your first turn, which means it is possible to do stuff like make 2 level 9 synchros and then overlay them for true king of all calamities. But you're pretty much throwing all your eggs into one basket if you're doing that. If they negate the calamities, then you're fucked. Uh, same thing with making any three material synchros, like Trish or Quarian Gondrax. You can do it, it's pretty powerful, but that's pretty much the end of your turn. Focusing on these big game-winning boss monsters might be the way that this deck goes if it ever becomes meta, but I found more success swarming with the easier-to-make monsters and establishing a resource loop. Roughly half my extra deck is negates or floodgates that you can make first turn to slow your opponent down. And the remainder of the extra deck is removal that you can bring out to clean up your opponent's board and grind them out of the game. I'll go over my extra deck choices briefly so you can understand what function each one serves and why I picked it, but realize that none of them are key to the deck. If you don't like any of my choices, feel free to swap them out with anything in the side deck, or any other synchro slash ixies that fit the level 3 theme. So starting here, Final Sigma is immune to all card effects while it's in the extra monster zone, and it deals double battle damage when it fights a monster. Obviously the second effect can close out games, but the first effect can be a pretty huge obstacle for some opponents. Many decks are only playing one card that can beat over this by battle, and if you pop that card with your trap, well, your opponent's gonna find themselves taking the trigonometry exam without a calculator, if you know what I mean. Uh, going first to Zulkin is probably the better level 12. You're almost always searching the trap on your first turn, and if you set a spell trap while you control this, you can get Crystal Wing or Moonlight for free. Crystal Wing is your first turn monster negate, and Moonlight is a go second bounce card that also doubles as a floodgate against decks that play a lot of high level monsters. Uh, going back to our level 9s, Vermilion Dragon Mech is just a removal option, lets you banish a tuner to pop a card. And Firefox serves as a go first floodgate. While it's on the field, any card sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead. Which is not as powerful as something like Dark Law or Macro Cosmos, but it makes up for that by being recursive. If it's in the graveyard, you can banish two monsters with different types and attributes and summon this back out onto the field. Our only level 6 synchro is some removal, it lets you banish two monsters from the graveyard to send one card on the field to the graveyard. It doesn't destroy, it sends, which can make it a nice out to something like Dingirsu that prevents destruction. 
Uh, moving on to your Ixies, Zeus is pretty much a staple in every Ixie deck at this point. I'm not going to go over it, just play it if you can. Utopia Beyond turns all your opponent's monster's attacks to zero when it's summoned, which is how I deal with Dragoon and other untargetable, undestroyable problems. Uh, Strike Bouncer is our only negate for this rank, uh, can detach to negate monster effects that activate on the field and inflict a thousand. Firebird, meanwhile, can banish one face-up card your opponent controls, along with one card in their graveyard. Nice banishing removal. And Fairy King can bounce all other cards on the field at spell speed 4. He's kind of a hassle to make because he takes three level 6s, but the payoff can be worth it on established fields. If your opponent isn't negating your playmakers because they're waiting for a boss monster to come out, this can be an awesome thing to drop on a board full of monster negates since they can't respond to it. As for rank 3s, Electro Dragon is like the most situational negate in the history of the extra deck, but you gotta take what you can get. Uh, the only other generic rank 3 monster that negates is Bamboozling Gossip Shadow, which doesn't negate, it just turns any monster effect into both players draw a card, which sometimes benefits your opponent. Uh, finally, we have Break Sword, who's probably the closest thing we have to a staple in here, since its removal can pop your spell traps, which all have effects in the graveyard. So that's your toolbox, but the important question is, how do we actually make all these cards? That brings us to the Datascape main deck, which can be kind of difficult to wrap your head around. The Datascapes have a lot of text, but fortunately, most of it's the same between all the monsters. Every monster has the same clause, saying that if you special summon them, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn unless they have a level slash rank of 3 or higher. Since links don't have levels, you can't use these to make links, you're pretty much stuck to Ixies and Synchros. Anyway, aside from that restriction, all the datascapes that we play at 3 have the same summoning condition, which works like this. If they're in your hand, you can target a datascape, monster, spell, or trap on the field, send a different type of datascape card from your deck to the graveyard, then special summon them, and do something unique. So, like, if you normal summon a datascape, then all the other datascapes in your hand can target that monster, send a spell or trap to the graveyard, and special summon themselves. Or, say you activate the continuous spell, then all your monsters can summon themselves by sending a trap or another monster. It's pretty simple on the face of it. Where things get complicated is each monster's unique effects. Dog is the easiest. He just says at the end of the turn, add a datascape monster from your grave to your hand. Monk, meanwhile, says when he's summoned, you can summon any datascape from your graveyard, except the one you sent for his effect. So, like, if you target a spell and send a monster to summon him, you can't then immediately summon that same monster that you set. It has to be a different one. A Cyber Goat's effect lets you Foolish Burial an additional card, but it can't be the same type you targeted or the same type you sent. So if you target a monster and send a spell, you have to Foolish a Trap. Princess is the same way, but she searches that third card, which means you have to plan ahead carefully. If you want to grab a monster with her effect, you have to find a way to get a spell or trap on the field that you can target, send the other one, and then search the monster. And vice versa, if you want the spell, then you have to target a monster, send a trap. As for those spell traps, the two continuous ones have graveyard effects. The trap can be banished to modulate levels, like I said before, and the spell can be banished to search a monster, though you also have to discard a card after you search, which can further complicate things. Fortunately, we do have some monsters with graveyard effects. The blue cat girl summons herself from the graveyard when you summon a level 3 monster, but she's treated as a tuner when she does this, and she's banished if she leaves the field. The bunny does almost the same thing, becomes a tuner and banishes itself when summoned from the graveyard, but you have to discard a psychic or worm monster to summon her. Uh, all the datascapes are psychic and worms, by the way, and we play a few extra psychics just for good measure. Uh, but yeah, these are the only two that don't have that standard special summon effect I mentioned earlier, which is why we play them at less than three. You generally don't want to open with these in your hand. You want to send them to the graveyard with the other datascape effects so you can revive them. The blue is at two because it's slightly more useful and it's more likely to get banished so it helps to have another copy. Uh, if you send it for any of the level threes, it'll be in the graveyard when that monster is summoned, meaning you immediately get it back. 
And of course, if you use it for an Ixie summon, then when you detach it, it goes back to the graveyard to be used again next turn. Of course, sometimes you want to banish things. You may have noticed that a lot of the cards in this archetype banish themselves, and that's because of Data Gun. On the field, this thing can once per turn shuffle two banished Datascape cards back into the deck in order to target and destroy one face-up card on the field. This thing is the crux of everything you want to do. Regardless of what you summon out of the extra deck, you want to try to end on this because it can give you continuous disruption while recycling your card so that your plays are repeatable next turn. Also, it can be used to out Mystic Mine, which is always a plus. But yeah, your goal in any game should be to get this out as quickly as possible while just barfing a bunch of data scapes onto the field. Fortunately, that first part isn't too difficult because we play this at 3, the other Datascape spell lets you activate it straight out of the deck, and Princess can search either of these with her effect. And of course, Princess herself is searchable if you have a way to get the continuous spell into the graveyard. Which is why we play Foolish Burial Goods to send it there, along with Twin Twisters which can discard or even pop it in extreme situations. From there, what you do really just depends on what you happen to open with. The deck isn't really linear, and there's no standard combo lines that I could find. You just kind of have to figure out the best way to get the most monsters on board, and then use those monsters to make appropriate extra deck cards for the situation you find yourself in. There's enough negates and removals of Ixies and Synchros and all the different levels that whatever combination you have, you should be able to make something. It's just obviously some hands are better than others. Uh, all that leaves us with then is my tech cards, which can be replaced at your leisure. The Moth is just a bonus level 6. It says it's level 5, but once per turn it can increase its level, so it, it's a level 6. And if you control no monsters, you can special summon it, which just gives you a free high level body on board. Overdrive Teleporter, meanwhile, is a high risk, high reward card. It's also a level 6, but it can't be special summoned. You have to tribute summon it which is actually not too difficult given our setup. If you open with either of the spells and one of the data scapes, you can get a free monster on board without using your normal summon. Same if you open with Moth or e -Telly. And once you tribute summon it, this thing allows you to pay 2,000 life points to summon two level 3 psychics from the deck, which literally gives you access to every single card in the extra deck. Uh, two level 3s can make a rank 3, obviously, and if one of those are a tuner, then you've got your level 6 synchro instead. If you want to make a level 9 synchro, then you could just use one of your level 3 tuners along with Teleporter himself. And if you want anything else, there's Rise Bell. This is a level 3 psychic that can increase the level of any card on the field by 3 when it's special summoned. So you can make itself level 6 and overlay with Teleporter to make your big Ixies, or you can turn one of your tuners into level 6, allowing it and Teleporter to make your level 12 synchros like Zulkin and Sigma. It's a really nice card when it goes off, though obviously a well-timed Ash, Valor, or Imperm will leave you with a 2100 vanilla on board and nothing else to make plays with. Uh, all that leaves is e Telly, which should be obvious, it's a free level 3 or a level 6 if you use it on Rise Bell. And Ghost Ogre. I went with this hand trap not because it's the best one in this format, but because it has the most synergy with the rest of the deck. It's level 3, meaning its normal summon will trigger the Cat Girl. It's psychic, so it can be summoned off of Overdrive, Teleporter, or discard to summon Tutu. And it's a tuner, so it can be used for Synchro Summons, or banished for Vermilion Dragon Mech. Just a lot of utility out of the Ghost Ogre. And that's really the deck. That's everything you need to know. There's a couple other cards in the side deck that aren't obvious, I guess. Should go over those. Uh, for non-extra deck monsters, there's the Psychic Wheels, which are a pair of level 3 psychics that have some synergy with the archetype. As well as this interesting level 3 Floodgate that might be a cool side deck to counter some future meta. The Fusion Trish is here because it's a level 9. You can summon using any three monsters with different names, which gets you access to Calamities much easier. Uh, same thing with Cloud Castle, it's a level 9 synchro that summons a level 9 from the grave, allowing you to overlay with your fox to get Mystic Mine on legs. Void Ogre is another Tzolkin target, you often end with no cards in your hand so this can negate spell traps. Uh, we have a bunch more level 6 synchros that just didn't quite make the cut. A uh, Gauntlet Launcher, pretty decent removal, another rank 6. And you can make Totem Bird and negate spell traps since we play several level 3 wind monsters, though it's not super reliable. 
Um, oh, and there's also this other Datascape car that has super niche uses. Uh, finally, if you want to be a true mad lad, you can hard make the Seven Sin Spider by making a Sigma, and then also making a Fox that you boost from 9 to 12 using the trap. This is super risky, but it allows you to actually use its effect, which if you don't know, is to banish all your opponent's special summoned monsters and then attach one as material. It can be a game ender on its own and the 4k attack beats over Dragoon, but like with Calamities, it's something that takes so many resources to make, its usefulness is doubtful. Uh, it is very funny though. Uh, anyway, that's it for this week's deck profile. Hopefully you learned how to play a new deck. Like the video if you liked it. Comment if you tried it out yourself. Let me know how it plays. And subscribe if you want more strange deck profiles. I do one of these every other week. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck and have fun.